New troop levels and defense levels are coming in the Clash of Clans update. There is so much more as well, but this is only sneak peek one. So let's break down everything you see here, starting with not just new collector levels. Do you see it? The progress bars are back. And there is also another huge quality of life change that I'll cover after all of these building upgrades. You will see this throughout the defense and troop upgrades I am showcasing today. But in relation to the Dark Elixir drill, you can upgrade that for 6 million elixir and it will take 8 days. Here on the developer build, I am able to skip that time in order to show you the aesthetics of each of these new upgrades. There is also a new level to the gold mines. Remember when you're upgrading any of these, they will not be producing resources but once they are upgraded and producing more after a couple of weeks you'll have made the difference back anyway exactly the same cost for the elixir collector but in reverse this time costing gold rather than elixir and remember any of the costs shown in the video do not include the gold pass discounts which if you are purchasing you can use code judo to support my channel and i'd like to point out that all three of those collectors are available to upgrade to that maximum level at town hall 14 now let's go over the new defense levels and then we will go through the troop levels after that. The Scattershot, a major upgrade as part of this update. It will gain an extra 310 hit points and an extra 5 DPS. But remember this is splash damage. Looks a lot more powerful with the new Town Hall 16 nature theme. Next up is the Tesla, which has what looks like crystals to match the nature theme. It does, however, get an extra 100 hit points points and 10 damage per second, which remember you have numerous of these around your base. So it means in the form of a Tesla farm, you're really increasing the DPS in that area. The Inferno Tower though, going to level 10 in single target mode, it gains an extra 200 damage per second on that ramping beam. It gains an extra 10 damage per second in the multi mode. Hit points are obviously the same across the two, and this will cost 22 million gold with 14 days to upgrade. And any of these upgrade times are going to be around about the maximum we will see in Clash of Clans, because the team recently answered a bunch of community questions, and they explained how they do not want upgrade times to go above what they are at the moment. They're actually significantly less than what they were at Town Hall 15. The final defense or trap getting an upgrade in this update is the Seeking Air Mine, gaining an extra 200 damage, basically just bringing it in line with the new troop upgrades of Town Hall 16. Moving up to the other couple of upgrades before we go over the quality of life and balance changes, the Penthouse is not getting a new level, but inside that you can see the Electro Owl now has new levels to match that of Lassie and the Mighty Yak. Just to note as well, these five extra Electro Owl levels actually come into play at Town Hall 15. This potentially brings some more use cases of these older pets at higher level. Pets were initially unlocked at Town Hall 14, so it makes sense that by Town Hall 16, they have more levels to bring them in line with the balance of that Town Hall. Moving on though, the Dark Spell Factory gains an extra level up to level six at Town Hall 12. Now, unfortunately, you will have to wait of one of those future sneak peeks to see what is inside here, but be sure to subscribe to see that. We do only have a small percentage of viewers subscribed to the channel. This does not increase your spell capacity. However, it will increase the hit points of this building slightly. 5 million elixir and 8 days to upgrade. Remember, any spells you brew within the spell factory will cook up at 50% the rate whilst this is upgrading. So you might want to use a book of building to finish this one off. Town Hall 16 players, though, can upgrade an extra 100 wall pieces to level 17. This means we can upgrade a total of 250 out of the 325 to that maximum level. With all of the new building upgrades out of the way, though, let's go over the new troop levels. Firstly, you can notice is the Baby Dragon getting upgraded to level 10. This has an extra 100 hit points and 10 damage per second. Remember, this will give the Inferno Dragon an extra level as well, being the respective super troop for the baby dragon. I don't think many people use Inferno Dragons in the current meta. However, one troop that I will be upgrading first is the Bowler to level 8. This gains an extra 50 hit points and 12 damage per second for 350 
1000 Dark Elixir. I'll be using my Book of Fighting on this one. Because at Town Hall 15, I always used to enjoy the Super Bowler attacks, and now it gains that extra level for 15 extra damage per second and 200 extra hit points. And my Root Rider attack is going to get a nerf, as you will see, so the Super Bowler attack is something that I think I will probably return to. Other Dark Elixir troops getting a new level include the Minion, which gives an extra 6 hit points and 4 DPS. However, much like the Super Bowler, most people will probably upgrade this due to the Super Minion. It does only get an extra 10 damage per second and 100 hit points over the level 11 Super Minion, but a lot of us use this troop in the Defending Clan Castle, so that's where we will likely get the main benefit. Another strategy I liked at Town Hall 15 was the Queen Charge into Super Hog Riders, and Beaker will be happy to know that the Hog Rider also gets its new level to level 13, believe it or not. It's wild how fast the game seems to have progressed. Either that or I've just been playing Clash of Clans for too long, but it does get an extra 13 damage per second and 150 hit points. This will knock you back 350,000 Dark Elixir and you'll have to wait 14 days and 12 hours unless you use the Book of Fighting. Again, whether you like the regular Hog Riders or the Super Hog Riders, they will both get upgraded once this has completed. There is also a new level to two of the Siege Machines. The Siege Barracks is what I will be upgrading first because you get an extra Pekka at level five. So you normally have one Pekka and 11 Wizards come out of the Siege Barracks, which helps you to create the funnel before your normal Clan Castle troops then exit the Siege Machine. But now you get a second Pekka up in front of those Wizards. I don't know, that just feels like such a big improvement. It does get an extra 300 hit points. This does not increase the lifetime of the Siege Machine. It means it will diminish in health faster, but it just means that if something is attacking the Siege Machine, it can obviously withstand that damage a little bit longer, which is exactly the same cost and time for the Log Launcher. The Log Launcher gains an extra 300 hit points and 20 damage per second. However, its lifetime is actually increased. But I will say at Town Hall 16, even though I use a lot of Queen Charges, I have found myself using the Log Launcher on very rare occasions. On to balance changes. I will discuss the ones I feel have the biggest impact and then list any others. I mentioned my Root Rider attack. They are getting a slight nerf. It's nothing too drastic. But remember, they were released when Town Hall 16 first came out. Now we have more defense levels getting upgraded as well. So that will inadvertently hurt the Root Riders as well. Levels 1, 2, and 3 all get hit point reducers, but for the most part, I will talk about the maximum level, and a level 3 Root Rider loses 600 hit points. Obviously, this is for each Root Rider in your army, but they still have a massive 7,400 hit points, so I really don't think it will have that big of an impact. It just probably brings them a little bit more in line with what the intended balance is. What will have a pretty major impact, though, is the Super Archer hit point reduction. At level 12, it previously had 650 hit points. Now, it only has 600. That is a big deal because a bomb tower, when destroyed, deals 600 damage. So should you be using a Super Archer blimp attack, it does limit where you can land the blimp because the Super Archers would be instantly destroyed by the bomb tower. Whilst the freeze effect of the Spirit Fox is not in its description, it is a mechanic that was there, as I taught you in the Spirit Fox sneak peek when it was first released. That once the Spirit Fox attacks a defense, it slows it down. That will now not be the case once this update is released. Don't worry though, they are not all nerfs. There is just one more to mention, and that is the Super Barbarian. Nothing drastic but at maximum level, it will have 50 hit points less than what it previously did. However, the dragons, both the regular dragon, electro dragon, and the super dragon are getting buffed. The maxed level dragon, level 11, gains an extra 100 hit points. The super dragon gains an extra 200 hit points. And this is also mimicked with the electro dragon, which gets an extra 200 hit points at maximum level. There are also a couple of balance changes for builder base related troops and clan capital. Unfortunately, the super miner getting a nerf yet again. The final thing for this sneak peek is another quality of life change. And there are a couple of other changes 
changes that will be announced tomorrow. It is all to do with the clan chat. Initially, you can see a nice little visual upgrade to the request button. There is also a nice visual change whenever you are not in a clan, letting you know the benefits of joining a clan. But in my interview with Darian at the end of last year, he mentioned that they want to do overhaul the clan chat. Even the chat system is very 2012. It's in dire need of an update. And I feel based on that conversation, this is just the start of it. So we do have a little bit of a nicer UI where you can obviously see messages to and from your clan mates. The friendly challenge and troop donation button at the bottom is there. But you will now see a new icon where anybody elder or above can pin a message to the chat. You can still view this in the regular chat menu, but it means that all pinned messages have their own dedicated area. And yes, you can also unpin a message. You might have also seen there that you can now react to a message and the amount of reactions will be shown underneath, but you can now see which members have acknowledged the pinned message. And I think the new clan UI looks so much better and I am sure they are looking to improve it in the future as well. I look forward to bringing you the next couple of sneak peeks, but YouTube has recommended you one of my videos right here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it.